Happy Tuesday, webheads! We already know what comic books we're getting this week. The important thing is getting ready for next week. Hey, all my webheads out there, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. And fans, I am your host, Mike Spider Slayer, always helping you make decisions on what comic books to buy. And today, guys, I'm bringing you my top 10 most anticipated comics for July 7th, 2021. That's right, guys, it's never too early to start that pull list for next week. And hopefully, this helps you make decisions on what comic books to buy. And guys, things are heating up, man. I tell you, it is so hot here in Central Florida. Florida. It's insane, but we got some great comic books as well. And guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss any content from me. And of course, guys, my Road to 10K X-Men giveaway is still going on. We are so close now to 10K, so make sure you comment in the comment section below as it could enter you to win in this contest. Once I hit 10K, I will make that drawing and see who wins some of these fabulous X-Men prizes. All right, guys, so let's kick off this week's most anticipated, or should I say next week's most anticipated, with The Hot Seat. This is the book where I'm thinking about, it's on my radar, but will I pull the trigger when the time comes when I get to the comic book shop? And the book that is on the hot seat is... The Avengers issue 46. This is that whole Jennifer Walter story where we have the whole uh, Winter Guard going to capture Jennifer Walters and change her into something else. Like, what is happening, man? We are getting further and further away from the Jennifer Walters that I want and that we all know. And, and she, they're making her into something completely as something else so far from what she was that when the show comes on TV, it's not even going to be the same character. I don't know what they're doing. Hopefully, eventually, they change her back. But if you're following Avengers right now, Jason Aaron's run, we're on legacy numbering 746. What did you guys think of Heroes Reborn? This is 36 pages and a $5 comic book. All right, guys, next we go to the book that's on the rise. This is the book that has been better than expected, has really been on my radar. I'm going to read the story all the way through. This one goes to the Amazing Spider-Man annual number two, but it has to deal with the Infinite Destinies part four, Infinite Fury part four, Spider-Man versus Star. The name is stupid the way they describe it on here, but... The story is actually really good as we get to see different heroes confront different individuals who possess the Infinity Stones and they all get these powers and they're trying to learn this power and they all have this different, all these different agendas and it's been great. And the first person that had a stone was Star, which was... Um, uh, what's her name? Ripley Ryan. She had the Reality Stone, which made her into Star. She fought Captain Marvel, and now it looks like she's doing battle against Spider-Man here. This whole event is going to lead to what looks like Black Cat having the Infinity Gauntlet. How does she manage to do that? I don't know, but I did see an image as of recently where she is wearing the Infinity Gauntlet with the stones in it. It looks pretty cool, so that's why this one is on the rise, and the story has been fun. 36 pages, 5 bucks. Let's move on now, officially, to number 10. And number 10 goes to the Immortal Hulk, issue 48. Let the countdown to the end begin, guys. After this issue, there's only 49 in issue 50, and the Immortal Hulk is done. And then eventually, we're going to get Donny Cates on the Hulk, and then we're going to see where the character goes from here. So I am real excited about the ending of this. It looks like the Hulk is going to go to the Red Harpy, which is um, uh, Betty Ross. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what to expect. This book has been really slow and it's hard to just it's hard to imagine that it's actually going to end but i think al ewing has done a great job with this uh joe bennett with the artwork has done really well as also but my thing is and when it comes to al ewing i'm a little bit worried that if this is the pinnacle of his 
you know, storytelling. Like, is there anything going to be better than the Immortal Hulk, right? He's going on to Venom. I'm really, oh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, but we'll see. But that's another day. This is Immortal Hulk. 28 pages, $4. We'll see how this story comes to a close. All right, next we move on to number nine, which is Green Lantern issue four. The Green Lantern Corps is a mess right now. There is all kinds of things going up. Oh, Oa basically got destroyed. I thought Simon Baz got killed. That's not the case. He's alive, but he's missing an arm. We have um, the newest uh, Green Lantern on here. What's, uh, what's her name? Joe Mullen, who is trying to find out and investigate who was behind Oa's uh, explosion. And we have Teen Lantern by their side as well. Meanwhile, Jon Stewart and other Lanterns have lost their Green Lantern power. There's a lot of stuff going on. This is a great book. I've been really enjoying it. It's definitely a surprise. And I can't wait to see where it goes. So this is 40 pages and this one is $5. All right, next, moving on to number eight, we have The Amazing Spider-Man issue 70. This is the Sinister War prelude. And uh, I cannot wait for this this is a spider-man story that i have been waiting for for a very very long time right i we've had something with nick spencer and his whole storytelling with kindred and how drawn out this is and this just seems like a kind of an event that's just kind of popped out out of nowhere but this is the one that is probably going to be better than all of Nick Spencer's run because this has to do with the Sinister Six and the Sinister Syndicate or something like that. It's two different versions of Sinister Six and they're going to be fighting over each other to destroy Spider-Man. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think this is going to be the story that we probably expected from Nick Spencer but never really got until now. It's a shame that he is ending his run early because now we get in all this craziness that's happening in the title when it comes to Ben Riley coming back. Peter Parker may be possibly dying based off of the image. I'll show you the video that I left at the end here of what my thoughts are with Ben Riley returning. But we'll see what happens with it. I'm excited. Legacy numbering, it's 871. Again, it's a Sinister War prelude, 28 pages, $4. All right, next we move on to number seven. This goes to Firepower issue 13. This is, you know, I guess this is a jumping on point. This is the beginning of a new story arc when it comes to Firepower. We got this guy by the name of Owen Johnson who is basically like Ken or Ryu from Street Fighter that knows how to do firepower or fire balls. And uh, he's been trying to find out the history of you know where his parents came from uh and then he found that out and then he got married and has a family and all kinds of stuff and most recently he had to go back to the island and it's raining outside but the sun is out it's so weird here right now in florida so anyway it comes to firepower it's a great story by robert kirkman i definitely say if you want to jump on and understand the full extent of the story start with issue one even though we're on issue 13 if you read 12 issues you probably be done in about half hour it reads that quickly guys so firepower issue 13 all right next we move on to number six on the countdown and number six goes to batman issue 110 this is called the cowardly lot part five and then we also have the ghost maker backup story this is part four so this one's 40 pages five dollars we've gotten a lot of stuff when it comes to batman dealing with um uh the magistrate we got to see peacekeeper one wind up being created there's a lot of battling going on there uh there's just been some great stuff happening in batman the artwork is absolutely exquisite Ghostmaker in the last issue, when he was in the main Batman story, he was great. The interactions between him, between him and Harley were hysterical, you know? I loved it. And I'm curious to see what this issue has to offer here. All right, so now we move on to number five. This is a new number one Spider-Man book, whatever you want to call it. This is Extreme Carnage Alpha issue one. So... It says violence runs in the family. So 
basically we're going to get introduced to a bunch of different, I guess, new symbiotes in this series. Uh, we're going to get Scream, Page, Riot, Lasher, and Agony. So we're going to get those guys in there. Plus, it looks like we're going to see the return of Flash Thompson as anti-Venom or anti-Agent Venom, if you want to say, and I'm really excited for it. This is something that I feel that you can't take too seriously, and if you like symbiotes and you love action and you love, like, summer blockbusters, I think this is the comic for you. This is going to be awesome. 36 pages, $5. All right. Next, moving on to number four, we move on to one of my favorite independents right now. This one is done by Scott Snyder, and this one is Noctera. This is issue five. This is called Full Throttle Dark Part Five. And here's what it says in the description. It's here, the penultimate issue of Noctera's blockbuster first arc. Val Sundog Riggs must choose whether to keep her brother Emery safe in the mysterious sanctuary or risk it all against the black top bill and hordes of human shades to find the truth about the darkness once and for all. This book is 32 pages and $4. Val is a great character. She doesn't take shit from anybody. So well done. And the mysterious villain here by Black Top Bill, we don't even know what he looks looks like but he took one of Val's like allies tortured him kept him alive and made him become one of those PM shade creatures such a great book did I mention the artwork from Tony S Daniel is amazing it so is you guys will definitely love this book if you haven't checked it out yet if it's in the store read it one through four and then read issue five all right, guys, so now we're moving on to the top three. And number three this week for me goes to Wonder Girl issue two. This book is so well done, even though I only read one issue. I can't really say that it has been one issue, though, because if you read her Future State series, the artwork, the writing team, or the writer and the artist are the same. So the story was just as good. I loved it there, and I love it here. And this book, like I've said before, it's amazing to look at. It's so gorgeous. And the story has Yara Flor, who actually went to Brazil to go find out more history about her parents. And all of a sudden, there's an accident that happens. There's some mysterious, weird music that's going around that draws her to the water. She jumps in the water, and then she gets taken by some evil mermaid creature. We don't know anything about her. Meanwhile, on Thermoscara, there's some weird stuff going on there where everyone is hearing things and they're taking over their minds. So there's all kinds of crazy stuff that's going to happen there. Like I said, only one issue in, but if you read Future State, you know what you're going to get here. And I think this is going to be awesome. 32 pages, $4. All right, guys. And then number two goes to X-Men issue one. So here we go again, another volume of X-Men being released. This time we got the uh, whole new team on there where we got X-23, Jean Grey, Scott Summers, Sunfire, um, Polaris on there, Sync, and uh, Rogue. And I think I got all of them. I'm not sure if I did or not. If I did, oh well. If you're going to read the book, you're going to see who's on the roster. But uh, I am hoping that this book delivers. Because what we did not get in the lax last X-Men series was really a team dynamic. We learned about a lot of things that happened on Krakoa and setting things up for that mutant nation, but it was never like that team cohesiveness where they do battles against other bad guys or go on these adventures and things like that. It was just kind of Hickman writing things and then kind of closing doors or leaving things open. I don't know. It's kind of weird. So anything that Hickman wrote in the past when it came, comes to House of X and Powers of 10, it's going to be continued, I guess, in his Inferno series. And then we're going to get new stuff here. So I'm excited about this one. Hopefully there's a lot of action, a lot of fighting. 44 pages, $5. Looking forward to it. All right. So what was number one this week? My most anticipated comic for July 7th, 2021. Well, this one goes to the nice house on the lake. This is issue two. I loved issue one. I thought it was so well done about this mysterious character um, who meets these people throughout his life 
and invites him to the nice house on the lake for a nice, you know, week of fun and activities. And he makes all these crazy invitations, gives them all little symbols and they're all hanging out. And then the one girl winds up going on her phone and she realizes when she checks her Instagram or Facebook or whatever social media that she has, the world is coming to the end. And she actually had a conversation with the main guy saying, you know, he asked her, if there was an apocalypse, how would you want the world to end? And she gave him the description. And basically, he's done that here. And uh, now all these people are trapped on this nice house on the lake. They're not affected by the apocalypse because he considers them friends. But all the other people on Earth are. And this guy is something much more than human. Man, I can't wait to see what happens with this one. James Tynion is on fire. Let me tell you, Nice House on the Lake is going to be phenomenal. 32 pages, $4, guys. Don't pass this book up. This is going to be like the next something is killing in the children. I am, truly think that is. All right, guys. So there you have it. There are my top 10 most anticipated comic books for next week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the list. I can't wait to hear in the comments below what you're looking forward to next week. And guys, if you like this content, like I said, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell. And if you want to check out more content, I got plenty of it here on this channel. So click on this or this and you'll be sucked into the Comic Book Corner 2.0 rabbit hole. So until next time, guys, this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off. I'll see you on that next video.